and so on. And I can do that to make the code more understandable and readable to me. Because that's important, because one of our key things is to make documents that don't just work, but are easy to change. Now, some of you may be interested in web development. Some of you may be interested in software development. It doesn't really matter. Web development is just sort of a subset of software development. And one of our main goals in all forms of software development is to make something that's easy to go back and change. All right, that's a key criteria if I say that's a good program. Why is it a good program from a programmer's perspective? Well, first of all, it does the job that it was supposed to do. That's pretty important. All right, but secondly, it's easy to change. So in other words, you can add features to it easily without breaking the application. All right, or if some rule changes, you know, if the, the tax rates change, does it require completely rewriting the payroll application? Or can it be changed with just a couple of, of changes in a database somewhere? All these are criteria that, that make a piece of software that you write better or less good. All right, so you want to you wanna stack the odds in your favor. All right, you want to help yourself out because you know that you're going to come back at some point and change it. And therefore, anything that you can do, even simple things like formatting the code, will make it easier to change later on. So you do want to pay attention to this. All right. So you format the code in a way that makes it more reasonable. And the good news is the browser ignores those extra spaces. The browser treats any of that white space as simply a single space, so I can format it however I want, and it's going to appear the same in the browser. Second thing about nesting, all right, is that tags ought to be properly nested. All right, what do I mean by properly nested? Some of you may have seen those Russian nesting dolls where you have like, they're like eggs and like, there's a small one, then there's a little bit bigger one, and a little bit bigger one. The idea of those, those are called nesting dolls, because the one inside is completely inside the other one. They don't overlap, which I guess would be impossible to do in that case, but the same thought applies here. In other words, if a tag starts within a tag, it ends within the tag. So... This is incorrect, all right? Why is this incorrect? Well, the H1 tag started within the HTML tag, but it ends within the H2 tag. If we were going to draw lines, there would be overlapping between those tags. So this is not properly nested. What happens if you don't properly nest your tags, or for that matter, what happens if you break any rule in HTML? Well, it depends, all right? There's no clear-cut answer. The browser, if you violate the rules of HTML, the browser has to guess what you meant, essentially. And it might guess right, or it might guess wrong, all right? It would be like if I gave you a statement that wasn't grammatically correct. Or let's say I, I spelled it wrong. Let's say I, I, I asked you to go to the store for me and I asked you to pick up orange juice, but I spelled orange with a J instead of a G. All right? Well, you're liable to look at that and say, oh, they meant orange juice and get it. If, however, my spelling was so bad you might have no idea what I wanted, and you might get me, you know, orange marmalade or whatever, all right? It's the same idea with these tags. If you break the rules of the language, you don't know what you're going to get. It might work, it might not work. Worse than that, it might work differently in different browsers, because different browsers 
might guess differently. One browser might say, oh, I know what he means and display it correctly. Another browser might say, oh, I have no idea what they're trying to say here and come up with an erroneous result. All right. Again, the importance of testing across multiple browsers. Later on in the semester, we'll look at a, a program called the Validator, which is sort of like a spell check for web pages, where you can run your page through there and it will look to see if you've broken any rules. But we won't worry about that right now. All right. Onward and upward. That's the only part of our required tags. Our second tag that you need besides the HTML tag is the head tag. And there's also a body tag. Notice that anything that's going to display on the page is part of the body tag. The head is sort of information about the page. And right now there's only going to be one tag in the head, and that is a title for the page. And we'll call this Mike's Olympic page. So now I'll go and save this. And notice that now the title bar says Mike's Olympic page because we put a title there. But the rest of the page looks the same. But we have a completed web page now. We've done everything that we need to do. So at the very least, your web page needs a doc type, an HTML tag, a head tag that contains a title, and a body tag that contains all this stuff inside of it. All this stuff being the stuff that you want to appear on the page. Close body, close HTML. All right, let's spend a minute to review. Someone tell me something about a tag. Tell me anything that you can think of about a tag. Yes, that tags come in pairs, and the ending tag ends with a slash. So, looks like this, tag, end tag. So whatever the tag name is, the ending tag is the same, but it has a slash. So for example, h1 and h1. Something else? Yes? All right. right. Tags have to be nested properly. Nested properly simply means that if a tag starts within a tag, it ends within a tag. So if we have this, HTML body H1, This is not correct. It's not correct because that H1 tag starts within the body but ends within the H2. So the way to correct that would be to move this up here. Anything else? Doc type HTML at the very top is required, first of all. And it, it tells a browser that it's an HTML5 document that the browser is dealing with. All right? And if the browser knows what it's getting, it can do a better job displaying it. 
All right, as opposed to if the browser has to guess what it is. Anything else? Yes. Tags describe what the text means. All right. In other words, a web page is developed by simply typing stuff in, plain text. Well, how does that make an image by typing in text? Or how does that make a link? Or how does that make a heading? The tags tell it. This is what this means. I have the words Rio Olympics. Is that just a comment? Is that a link? Whatever. Well, the tag tells it. The tag tells it that this is the title of the page and put it in the title bar. The tag tells it that this is a top level heading, second level heading, and so on. Anything else? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, there, there, is, there is an order. There's a lot of flexibility once you get inside the body about the order, but the basic shell is going to be doc type, HTML, head, body, and then end. Now, what appears within the body and the order that that appears in, there's a lot of flexibility about that, right? Because if you think about it, there's all different kinds of web pages, right, that look all different kinds of ways. And there's a lot of flexibility about that. You know, some web pages are just a giant picture and a link, you know, like if, especially like the home page of, of, of a site or whatever. Whereas some have articles upon articles and a bunch of links and so on. All right. But yeah, there's a general sort of shell um, that all your web pages should conform to. Anything else? White space uh, gets ignored. Um, and, and at first, that can be a little confusing or that can be frustrating. But over time, you'll see that that's a good thing because that allows you to format the code in a way that is readable. All right? Um, last thing, I guess, that we sort of implied is that tags fit the format like this. Less than sign, the name of the tag, greater than sign, and then we mentioned about the ending tag being the same with a slash in front of it. But the less than sign, greater than sign always indicate to the browser that it's a tag. Um, I think that's it for now. All right. I mean, not, not, no, 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 that doesn't mean the end of class. Uh, that's the end of the review section of the class. I saw everyone getting excited. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, let's cover some more tags. Because the question of how to do things is a matter of what tag that you use for it. All right? So let's, let's do a link. All right? A link is good because it's going to show us something that we haven't talked about yet, and that is a property All right, associated with the tag. All right, let's say, for instance, you know, I was lazy one day and I said, I'll give someone two extra credit points if they go to my car and get my bag. All right. What information would you need to know in order to carry that out? Why I left my bag. <laughs> okay, I don't think you'd actually need to know that. You might want to. You might also want to know, like, is one of your legs broken? Why can't you go get it yourself? All right. Yeah, that's probably a good question, but you don't absolutely need to know why I left my bag. There's probably a more pressing issue. Let's put it that way. Yes. Where my car is. Which car? Go look at that parking lot. There's hundreds of cars over there. Which one of them is yours? All right. So let's think about putting a link on my web page, all right, because it's similar. If I, I can put a tag on my page saying that this is a link, what additional information does the browser need in order to go to that page? Yeah, where's the page? All right, so 
If I send you my car, you need to know what the car is. If I want to send the browser to another web page, I have to tell the browser where that page is. All right? So, we need additional information. I can't, say, can't simply say I have a link. I have to say a link to what? All right? And that's an additional piece of information about the tag. So there's a tag for a link, but we have to somehow get in there an additional piece of information. And that additional information is called, sometimes called an attribute or is sometimes called a property. So let's go and find the official Olympics website. I believe it is olympics.org. All right, and it is. So, I'm going to copy that address for olympics.org. And I'm going to go and I'm going to put a link on my page. And I'm going to put it within a paragraph. I'm going to say, The Rio Olympics were exciting, blah, 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 blah. That's the end of my paragraph. Now, when you have a link, all right, you need something for the user to click on, all right? You need some text or maybe even an image we could talk about later on. But for now, it's going to be some text. We need some text for the user to click on that this is the link. So, I'm going to make the word Rio Olympics the link. And because of the deal that we talked about with white space, I can actually put all these words on different lines. So the tag for a link is the A tag. So I do the greater than, or I'm sorry, the less than sign and then an A. And then I have to specify a link to what? All right. I do it this way. I do it with an href attribute or an href property. That's the additional information. A property consists of two things. All right? Consists the name of the property, and it consists of the value of that property. So let's think about how I could tell you where my car is. I could give you my license plate number. I could give you the color, the make, the model. I could give you the GPS locations if I happen to know what those GPS, the latitude and longitude of it. All right. I could give it, if, if the parking spaces were numbered, I could give you the, the number of the parking space. I'm in lot A and I'm in space 595 or whatever. So when we talk about attributes, we have to identify which attribute we're using. So, for example, if I were to say, which one is my car, and I simply said, ABC195. Well, is ABC195, maybe ABC is the lot name, and 195 is the space number? Or maybe ABC195 is my lot number? Or ABC195 is my parking lot permit number? Or what is ABC195? Well, I'd have to tell you that, right? Same thing here. When we give an attribute to a tag, we have to specify what that attribute is. So the browser has no doubt whatsoever what that is. 
Now, with lengths, it's pretty obvious, right? If we're talking about a length, we're going to talk about, well, what's the name of the length that we want to go to? But you still have to specify it. So, in this case, the length, href corresponds to the URL or the address of the page that we want to go to. So we have the name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then in quotes we have the value of that attribute. And in the case of links, that value is the URL. And it's the URL starting with HTTP or HTTPS. Usually, if you want to link to a page, the easiest thing to do, like if I wanted to go to the photo page, is I'd go to that page and then just copy it. All right? Now, the rules that I specified here about putting the HTTP in there and all that work when we're linking to a page that isn't one of our own pages a page that is someone else's, a page that lives on someone else's web server. All right? And in that case, I have to put in HTTPS and then, or HTTP and then the URL. So, we sort of changed just a teeny bit our rules for what a tag looks like. We have simple tags that look like this. Or we can have tags that look like this. All right. We can either have a tag that simply is a tag by itself with no extra information, like the H1s, or paragraph. I didn't really need to say anything more other than, hey, that's a paragraph. Hey, that's a top-level heading, and so on. With a link, though, I had to give extra information, and that extra information is given through the use of an attribute. Now, we can have more than one attribute in some cases, in which case it will be the tag name, attribute equals, attribute equals as many of them as we have and then the ending or, or then the, the greater than sign. And that's a, that's a little hard to see but we'll cover an example of it later on. Now, notice a couple things. First of all, the attribute is only on the starting tag. The ending tags don't have attributes with them. It's just that's the end of the link. All right? The attribute goes between the less than sign and the greater than sign. All right? Now, in the case of the link, what do you suppose goes between the starting tag and the ending tag? The clickable text. You know, I couldn't have said that better myself. I probably would have said the, the text, you know, that you put your mouse over and uh, the clickable text. All right, so now if we go and save this and refresh. And let me close that. We have the Rio Olympics were exciting. Notice that it looks different. It is magenta, I think is the proper color name. And if we click on it, we get taken to that page eventually. After it thinks about it. There we go. Now, the browser's smart enough 
to code the link and to, to color the link differently if you visited the page or not. Let me open this up in another browser. Let me open this up in Google Chrome. Notice that the link is blue in there. And the same would have been true if I would have opened it up first in, uh, in Internet Explorer without opening it up, uh, without opening up the Olympics page. A blue link, by default, means that you haven't visited that link before. Once I click on it, and if I go back to that page and hit refresh, it's a little hard to see, but it's, it's more of a purplish as opposed to a blue. So the color of the link, by default, tells you if you visited it or not, which is valuable, right? It can be valuable. If you, for example, were looking for a piece of information and you went to a website and you clicked on one link and didn't find the information and then you tried another link and tried another link, it would be useful to know what pages you visited so you don't go back to them if, if they already didn't have the information. Or, in fact, the other way around, too. If you knew that you found a piece of information that you wanted to see again, it would be useful to know that you visited a certain page so that you could go and do that. All right. Now, we've covered most of the concepts relating to tags. Notice I said concepts. We're not done. We can't go and hit the beach for the next 14 weeks. All right, We still have work to do. We have to learn about specific tags. There's a whole ton of tags that we haven't covered yet. But the concepts as far as tags go, that they come in pairs, starting and ending, nesting, white space, attributes, and all that, are most of the main concepts about tags. Now it's just a matter of learning all the tags. Well. What if I want an image? What if I want a table of data, like a chart? What if I want a caption to an image? Those are all, there's, there's always tags for that. So it's a matter of learning the tags. And then we're going to uh, look, get into CSS where we say, well, I don't want my page to be just a boring black and white linear straight down the line. I want to have some sort of layout to it. I want it to look uh, good and be easy to navigate and all that. All those things come into CSS and styling, and we'll pick up on that next week. Are there any questions? Yes? Um, because I'm dumb. Are there any other questions? The question was, why is there two closing paragraph tags? Is because of an oversight. That does bring up an important uh, idea, though. Notice that the, the, the browser, even when I had the two closing tags, the browser still displayed it correctly. So if I go and change that and save it, it doesn't matter. That was a case of me violating one of the rules of HTML, but the browser knew what I meant, so it did it correctly. All right, You won't always be that lucky. For example, this is a good one, and this always panics at least one student every semester. What if I forget the, an, the end title tag? Yeah, this is always a good one, because I always see the panic in their eyes that I lost my page. And if I do that, notice what happens. Nothing. It looks like your entire page disappeared. Well, what really happened? Well, the browser couldn't figure out what I intended here. And I simply forgot the end title tag. So it thinks my entire page is a title. And it never hits the end title tag, so it never knows where to finish that. And therefore, everything I have after that is considered not part of the page, but part of the title. One thing we'll do in this class, and I'll, I'll try to remember it, uh, and it's a good idea to experiment with this, is to intentionally make mistakes. All right? In fact, I will probably use that as an excuse when I actually make mistakes, is that I intentionally made that mistake to demonstrate what happens if you make that mistake. All right? The bottom line is sometimes nothing, sometimes 
catastrophe. <laughs> all right? And that's why it's best of all, first of all, not to make those mistakes. All right? Because you never know how different browsers are going to treat it. Um, but then it's important to test on multiple browsers and make sure everything's okay and run it through the validator and all that. All right? So um, I guess that's all I had unless there's other questions. I will post this example along with the video. And you should have enough information now uh, to finish up the lab. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, there are other tags in the book, by the way, that we haven't got to yet that we'll get to next week. Uh, and you're welcome to like go ahead and try to use those as well. All right? Okay, we'll see you in lab. Are you sent in Ridgeville? Okay. See you next week.